Insulin resistance is silently affecting millions of people over 50, even those who eat well and exercise. If you're gaining weight around your midsection, feeling constantly tired, or noticing blood sugar creeping up, this could be your body's warning sign. And here's the surprising part. It's not just about diet or genetics. Your time in the sun might be playing a bigger role than you realize. Welcome to the True Health Channel. Today, we're unpacking one of the most overlooked science-backed factors influencing insulin sensitivity, sunlight. Not just for vitamin D, but for its direct effect on how your cells respond to insulin, regulate inflammation, and manage glucose, especially for people in their 50s, 60s, and beyond. Declining insulin sensitivity can quietly set the stage for prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, stubborn belly fat, fatigue, and even cognitive decline. But emerging research shows that natural sunlight exposure can help restore your metabolic flexibility, improve glucose regulation, and reduce insulin resistance, even without drastic lifestyle overhauls. So if you're looking to get ahead of midlife health changes, this video breaks down the science behind sunshine and metabolism, and how just 15 minutes outdoors each day might help you reverse insulin resistance naturally. Stick around, because we're diving deep, from molecular biology to practical strategies, so you walk away with actionable tools backed by real evidence. Section 1. What is insulin sensitivity and why it becomes critical after age 50? As we cross into our 50s and beyond, the way our bodies process and regulate blood sugar begins to change, and not in our favor. Insulin sensitivity, a marker of how efficiently your cells respond to insulin, tends to decline with age. This drop is especially pronounced in postmenopausal women and adults over 50, making it a key focus for anyone concerned about metabolic health, energy levels, or chronic disease prevention. So what exactly is insulin sensitivity? Think of insulin as a key. When you eat carbohydrates, your body breaks them down into glucose, which enters your bloodstream. Your pancreas then releases insulin to unlock your cells so they can absorb that glucose and convert it into energy. The more insulin sensitive you are, the less insulin your body needs to manage your blood sugar efficiently. But when insulin sensitivity decreases, a condition known as insulin resistance, your cells become sluggish at opening up to insulin. As a result, glucose stays in your bloodstream longer, forcing your pancreas to pump out even more insulin to compensate. Over time, this leads to hyperinsulinemia, chronic inflammation, and eventually type 2 diabetes. Here's why this matters especially after age 50. Age-related hormonal changes, such as declining estrogen in women and testosterone in men, directly affect insulin signaling. Muscle mass tends to decrease with age, and muscle is a major site for glucose uptake. Less muscle equals sign less glucose disposal. Visceral fat, belly fat, becomes more common, which secretes pro-inflammatory cytokines that worsen insulin resistance. Mitochondrial function declines, reducing the efficiency of glucose metabolism at the cellular level. Lifestyle patterns, such as lower physical activity and reduced sun exposure, exacerbate the problem. And it's not just about blood sugar. Insulin resistance after 50 is a central player in the development of a range of age-related chronic diseases, including obesity, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD, hypertension and atherosclerosis, cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease, often called type 3 diabetes in some research circles, polycystic ovary syndrome, PCOS in postmenopausal women. Understanding insulin resistance in this age group is essential. It's often underdiagnosed until it manifests as full-blown metabolic syndrome. That's why early intervention through nutrition, movement, and yes, even sunlight is critical. Here's the good news. Insulin resistance is not a permanent condition. It's reversible, especially in its early stages. And there are multiple tools we can use to restore insulin sensitivity naturally. One of the most overlooked and completely free interventions, sunlight. Yes, daily sun exposure, in the right dose and timing, can play a surprisingly powerful role in regulating insulin sensitivity. Through its effects on vitamin D synthesis, circadian rhythm regulation, and even nitric oxide production, sunshine becomes more than just a mood booster. It becomes a metabolic ally. We'll dig deeper into the science of sunlight and insulin regulation in the next section. But just know this, for people over 50, improving insulin sensitivity isn't just about blood sugar. It's about preserving energy, preventing disease, and aging with strength and clarity. Section 2. The Science Behind Sunshine. How Sunlight Improves Insulin Sensitivity. Most people associate sunshine with a tan, a mood boost, or maybe even stronger bones thanks to vitamin D. But here's where things get fascinating. Sunlight plays a direct and powerful role in how your body manages blood sugar and insulin. 
This makes it a natural, free, and often underutilized tool in the fight against insulin resistance, especially as we age. So how does sunshine influence insulin sensitivity? One, vitamin D, the hormone that talks to your insulin system. Let's start with the most well-known pathway, vitamin D synthesis. When your skin is exposed to ultraviolet B, UVB rays from sunlight, it converts cholesterol into vitamin D3, which is then activated in the liver and kidneys. While vitamin D is technically classified as a vitamin, it functions much more like a hormone, and it has over 2,000 gene targets, many of which are involved in glucose metabolism and insulin regulation. Research has shown that vitamin D helps improve the function of pancreatic beta cells, the cells responsible for producing insulin. It also makes muscle and fat cells more responsive to insulin, which helps glucose enter those cells more efficiently, lowering blood sugar. Several studies support this link. A meta-analysis in diabetes care found that people with low vitamin D levels were significantly more likely to develop insulin resistance, prediabetes, and type 2 diabetes. Another study in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism showed that raising vitamin D levels in deficient individuals led to improved insulin sensitivity and lower fasting insulin levels. In short, low vitamin D equals sign poor insulin response, and sunshine is your most natural source of vitamin D. 2. Circadian Rhythm and Insulin Signaling Here's something most people don't realize. Your body's insulin sensitivity fluctuates depending on the time of day, and this rhythm is regulated largely by light, especially sunlight. Exposure to bright natural light early in the day helps reset your circadian clock, which governs everything from hormone secretion to digestion. This internal clock plays a key role in glucose homeostasis, or how stable your blood sugar stays throughout the day. People who don't get enough morning sunlight, especially those indoors all day or living in northern climates, often experience a mismatch between their internal clock and their eating activity patterns. This circadian misalignment has been linked to higher fasting glucose, increased insulin resistance, weight gain, and metabolic dysfunction. So by getting sunlight exposure within one, two hours of waking, you're not just helping your sleep at night, you're telling your body to process glucose more efficiently all day long. Three, sunlight and nitric oxide. A vascular game changer, another lesser known but incredible pathway involves nitric oxide, a molecule stored in the skin that gets released when we're exposed to sunlight even in the absence of vitamin D synthesis. Nitric oxide has powerful effects on the cardiovascular system and glucose metabolism. It helps. Relax blood vessels, lowering blood pressure. Improve blood flow to muscles and organs, enhance glucose uptake in skeletal muscle. A 2014 study in the Journal of Investigative Dermatology showed that UV exposure improves metabolic health markers independently of vitamin D, thanks to nitric oxide. In fact, Participants who receive controlled UV exposure experience lower fasting insulin levels, suggesting better insulin sensitivity. Even without a significant rise in vitamin D, so the benefits of sunlight go beyond just one nutrient. It's a cascade of biological reactions that support metabolic flexibility and glucose regulation. 4. Sunlight, Inflammation, and Insulin Resistance Chronic low-grade inflammation is a hallmark of metabolic syndrome, and it contributes heavily to insulin resistance. Emerging research suggests that moderate sun exposure may help reduce systemic inflammation through multiple mechanisms, improved immune modulation via regulatory T cells, lower levels of C-reactive protein, CRP, an inflammation marker often elevated in insulin-resistant individuals, enhanced production of anti-inflammatory cytokines triggered by vitamin D and nitric oxide. In other words, when you get safe sun exposure, you're not just boosting insulin sensitivity. You may also be calming the silent inflammation that drives diabetes, obesity, and heart disease. Five, mood, motivation, and blood sugar control. Let's not forget the behavioral side. Sunshine helps increase serotonin and dopamine, which boosts mood and can reduce cravings for sugar and refined carbs, a huge factor for people trying to stabilize blood sugar and avoid insulin spikes. Better mood, better eating habits, better insulin control. This also creates a positive feedback loop. When people feel good, they move more eat better, and are more likely to engage in healthy behaviors like walking outdoors, all of which help reverse insulin resistance. So, how much sun do you actually need? While this will vary depending on your skin tone, geographic location, season, and time of day, a general recommendation is 10-30 minutes of midday sun between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. 
ideally with arms and legs exposed, two, four times per week can be enough for most people to maintain healthy vitamin D levels and nitric oxide benefits. People with darker skin tones may require longer exposure to synthesize the same amount of vitamin D. Be mindful of safe sun practices. Avoid burning and consider sun protection after your vitamin D dose. Final word on sunlight and insulin sensitivity. Sunlight isn't just good for your bones or your tan. It's a powerful regulator of insulin, metabolism, and overall health. From vitamin D synthesis to circadian rhythm regulation, from nitric oxide release to inflammation reduction, the science is clear. Your body was designed to thrive with regular sun exposure. If you're over 50, or even just feeling tired, inflamed, or stuck in a cycle of sugar crashes, then safe, consistent time in the sun might be one of the most overlooked tools to help improve insulin sensitivity and reclaim metabolic balance. In the next section, we'll break down exactly how to integrate sunlight into your lifestyle, including timing, strategies, and smart pairings like outdoor exercise and grounding. Section 3. Practical Tips for Getting More Sunshine to Improve Insulin Sensitivity Now that we understand how powerful sunlight can be in supporting insulin sensitivity, balancing blood sugar, and reversing insulin resistance, the next step is figuring out how to make it work in your daily life safely and effectively. Let's break it down into practical, actionable strategies that help you harness the sun's benefits without putting your skin at risk. One, time it right, aim for midday sunlight, especially between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. This is the most effective window for natural vitamin D production. During these hours, the UVB rays necessary for synthesizing vitamin D are at their strongest. And the bonus? This is also when your circadian rhythm is most responsive to light, meaning better sleep and hormone regulation later on. Start with 10-30 minutes, depending on your skin tone and sensitivity. If you have lighter skin, 10-15 minutes may be enough. If you have a darker complexion, you may need closer to 30-45 minutes to produce adequate vitamin D. 2. Be smart with sun protection. Don't overdo sunscreen too early. While sunscreen is essential for extended sun exposure, applying it too early can block up to 95% of vitamin D synthesis. Here's a balanced approach. For your first 10-20 minutes in the sun, go without sunscreen if you're comfortable. Then apply a broad-spectrum sunscreen, SPF 30+, plus, if staying out longer. Focus on exposing larger surface areas, arms, legs, and even your back if possible. You don't need to sunbathe for hours. The goal is frequent, moderate exposure, not frying your skin. 3. Stack your habits. Combine outdoor sunlight with light exercise. One of the most effective ways to improve insulin sensitivity is combining two proven metabolic tools, sunlight plus movement. Take a 15-minute morning or midday walk outdoors. Do a gentle stretch or yoga session in your backyard. Ride a bike or go for a light jog during your lunch break. Even a few laps around the block after a meal can help lower post-meal blood sugar. This is known as postprandial glucose control, and it's a powerful anti-diabetes habit. This approach stacks benefits. Movement helps muscles use glucose more efficiently. Sunlight supports vitamin D, nitric oxide, and circadian rhythm fresh air. Equal sign reduce stress, which is another insulin resistance trigger. 4. Use nature as your gym. Sunlight boosting activities to try try any of these outdoor rituals that don't feel like a workout, but still count. Gardening combines physical activity, sunlight, and stress relief grounding, earthing. Going barefoot in grass or sand may help reduce cortisol and support inflammation control picnics, reading outdoors, or meditating in the sun. Great for mental health and blood sugar management. Outdoor socializing. Chat with neighbors or walk with a friend. You'll spend more time in the sun without thinking about it. 5. Let the light in, even through a window, to some extent. While UVB rays don't penetrate glass, so you won't produce vitamin D indoors, bright natural light still stimulates your circadian clock and improves mood and metabolic signaling. So if you work indoors or live in a cloudy area, sit near a bright window during the day open your blinds early in the morning. Use natural daylight bulbs. If sunlight isn't available, while not UV, they can still help maintain healthy biological rhythms. 6. Make sunlight a daily ritual, not a rare event. Sunlight works best when it's part of your routine, not a once-a-week activity. Think of it like brushing your teeth. A little every day adds up. Try habit pairing. Drink your morning coffee outside. Take phone calls on a short outdoor stroll. Replace 15 minutes of scrolling with a quick sunbreak pro tip. Use apps like Deminder or SunCalc 
to track optimal vitamin D exposure based on your location and skin type. 7. What if you live in a cloudy or cold region? Don't worry. There are still ways to support vitamin D and insulin sensitivity if you don't get much sun. Supplement wisely. Look for vitamin D3 plus K2. They work synergistically. Include vitamin D rich foods like salmon, sardines, egg yolks, and mushrooms. Use red light therapy or full spectrum light boxes as alternatives to stimulate metabolic function. Still aim to get outside when you can, even on cloudy days. Natural light still influences your hormonal and metabolic balance. Final thoughts on making sunlight part of your health plan. Sunlight is one of the most underrated natural health tools we have. Free, accessible, and backed by serious science. Whether you're trying to reverse insulin resistance, balance your hormones after 50, or simply feel more energized and focused throughout the day, getting outside can be a game changer. And the best part? You don't need a fancy gym membership or complicated routine. Just you, a little sunlight and consistency. In the next section, we'll show you how to pair sunlight exposure with other healthy habits, like diet, sleep, hydration, and fitness, to fully optimize your metabolic health and improve insulin sensitivity from every angle. Section 4. Combining sunshine with healthy habits. Now that we understand how sunlight impacts insulin sensitivity, let's take a look at the bigger picture. Because while sunlight is powerful on its own, its benefits multiply when combined with a few key lifestyle habits. Let's start with nutrition. A diet that supports insulin sensitivity is low in refined sugars and high in fiber, healthy fats, and whole nutrient-dense foods. Leafy greens, berries, nuts, legumes, and healthy oils like olive and avocado oil all play a major role. These foods don't just nourish you. They also slow glucose absorption, reduce inflammation, and improve cellular insulin response. Next, movement. You don't need to train for a marathon. Just consistent, moderate activity like walking, resistance training, or gardening, especially when done outdoors, helps muscles become more sensitive to insulin. And since muscle tissue is a major site for glucose uptake, more muscle mass means better blood sugar control. Hydration and sleep are also essential. Dehydration can elevate blood sugar, and poor sleep increases insulin resistance, even after just one night. Getting seven to nine hours of quality sleep, ideally synced with natural daylight exposure, helps reset your body's metabolic rhythm. And of course, back to sunlight. It's more than vitamin D. Sunlight helps regulate your internal clock, balances hormones like cortisol and melatonin, and supports the healthy functioning of your mitochondria, your cellular energy engines. This all adds up to improved insulin function, lower inflammation, and more energy throughout the day. Sunshine is free, natural, and highly effective, yet wildly underused in managing blood sugar, insulin resistance, and metabolic syndrome. So if you're over 50 and noticing changes in your energy, weight, or blood sugar levels, you're not alone, but you are in control. You can start small, step outside in the morning, prepare a balanced meal, move your body, stay hydrated, and prioritize your rest. These are simple, sustainable steps that work together, and they work better when practiced consistently. Thank you for spending this time with us. If you learned something new today, consider subscribing and sharing this video. We're here to bring you health content that goes deeper, grounded in science, designed for real life. Comment below. What time of day do you usually get your sun? Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video, and hopefully, out in the sun.